Welcome back to the ASOU online module uh, dedicated to prostate cancer. Now we are going to uh, go into a clinical case presentation. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, please open the discussion around the, this clinical case and we will see how the debate goes on. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, this is a gentleman that present uh, to my clinic. He's a 64 years old guy in uh, good general condition. He just has some hypertension which is treated. He is an opera singer in Paris and he's married with a son. And you see him here performing. So, he had his first PSA done ever in his life, which is 17.8 nanogram milliliter. And uh, his uh, uh, urinary function is correct. He's evaluated by the EPS score and this is 7 out of 35. And he got a digital rectal examination, which show a nodule at the right lobe in the prostate. And this is suspected to be extra prostatic disease. He got an MRI and you can see it here and you may probably want to comment on that. Nicola, any? Uh, two comments. If you feel a nodule and the things to the nodules to be outside the prostate, it's a clinical T3. Let me remind you, T and M is based on DRA for the T. And on the MRI, clearly, there seems to be a disease far outside of the prostate on the right, and the normal piece of the prostate seems to be minimal on the left. So would you advocate, uh, I would say, an MRI classification of the T3, or it's useless in your mind as soon as the digital rectal examination is positive? No, they are not done for the same purpose. The T stratification is the T has to be used worldwide, and the T is purely T, it's purely based on DRA. That very clearly said in the TNM staging book. Staging on the MRI might be much better and much more precise. The question is, is it the T MRI? It must be defined, it must be reliable, and to the best of my knowledge, it's not yet reliable. So Stephen, a word about the, the images displayed on the screen? I mean, for me, this is clearly T3 and it's bulky disease. So sure. that's, that's the conclusion. And, and, and highly likely, yes. The finger, a trained finger, <laughs> would feel that this is a, a real T3. Would yeah. you agree that an MRI in this situation would be extremely needed to plan what you're going to do yeah. for this yeah. man? Yeah. So independently of Absolutely. staging yeah. you know, yeah. purposes, so you need an MRI. To decide. To decide what you will do and how you will do that. So let's okay. move on and let's see what happened to this case. man. So this was found as a PIRATS4, we may discuss later on if this is probably PIRATS5 in the right lobe. Normal seminal vesicle, no infiltration of the seminal vesicle, no um, extension on the left hand side extra prostatic because we have seen that on the right hand side this was present. Mm -hmm. The man got biopsies and we saw a Gleason 4 plus 3. So this uh, gives us the opportunity to tell uh, our listener that uh, it should be probably better from now on to use the classification the ESIOP, that has been introduced very recently. What's your opinion? Absolutely. Nicola? If uh, it should be named, uh, labeled as ESIOP 3. Correct. So you don't have, otherwise you put all the Gleason 7 in the same box where we know there's ESIOP two that is three plus four and is it three that is four plus three have a completely different outcome. So Gleason is base, but in practice you should use the ESIP scoring. Absolutely agree. Steven? Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think that most pathologists will still mention both. That, that's, that's what standardly should be done now, but we will shift uh, completely to the ISOP uh, scoring system. Yeah. Yeah. Alberto, maybe a word, and uh, Nicola, uh, I would like to give your, uh, to obtain your opinion about that. Uh, you said that the PSA is quite high, and uh, you mentioned the digital rectal examination. There is no estimation of the volume of the gland from the, from the MRI and from the clinical examination. Outside the, the classification itself, I think uh, it's important. Do you have any notion of the, the, the volume of the gland? Of this uh, particular this man? Particular man? Yes, I guess it was something like 45 to 50. Mm. So quite regular, CCs, I would say. Okay. But this is a very important point. Yeah. Even for what we are going to plan later on. As you know, I am a radiotherapist. I'm and in addition to, uh, to liaise with the IPSS score Correct. also. Correct. Okay. So a, a, a workout was done with pelvic CT scan and bone scintigraphy. Both were negative. And this, I, can, I, I guess, it's baseline exam for such a case. Absolutely. Okay. But then the man went to... Uh, another colleague who suggested him to have a colline pet done. And of course, this may be very 
specific on every place in Europe where you, 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 are, you are working with, but this was quite common at that time. And you see that the right lobe of the prostate indeed mm -hmm. is uh, um, clearly interested by the disease. But then, all of a sudden, we also see a right internal iliac node, which is uh, clearly indicated in the uh, coline pet um, of this man. And my first question to you would be, would you uh, suggest such an exam in a patient with a high-risk disease as this man with a PSA of 17.8, or do you think that this is totally unreliable? Because this is the real question, totally unreliable. Nicola. Well, if you do something, it must have a practical impact. I'm not aware of any practical impact on a pet coli in that case. The man has a negative bone scan, a negative CT. We know from level one, strong level one evidence that this man deserved a local treatment plus a systemic one. Added value of pet, of pet, whatever pet, not sure yet. Second, you, may, you, might, you might see, is it negative? We have false negative. So the way you analyze and take into account the results might be completely wrong. There might also be some false positive. So my advice would be don't waste money and time doing this kind of exam in this patient now. Nicola, would it change your opinion if the number of nodes was massive, which is not the case here? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay, not at all. Same, same, same answer. Please, Stephen. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Cola and PET CT in, in the meantime has been replaced mostly by PSMA PET CT scan, first of all. We did uh, research on Cola and PET CT, whether it really adds information in preoperative staging, and it really does not add much. And we completely abandoned it. And I would actually recommend everybody to not start doing Cola and PET CT scans. Um, on top of that, you know, just looking at the case, it's a high risk case, pretty bulky disease. The risk of finding positive notes at surgery will anyway be around 40, 50%. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why do you want to per se look for notes on a scan? It, it doesn't really help yeah. you much. So um, I would recommend not to do call and PET CTs in such patients. I guess the message is really a very strong one. So yeah. don't use exams for which you don't know what to do exactly. once you got the answer. Okay. And this, I think, it's very important. Let's move on. But then, as very frequently happens with these patients that want to have more and more, he also went for a, for a pet PSMA. Okay. Okay. And here, of course, troubles are coming because you can see, of course, that the prostate is really, uh, uh, as you, uh, you may expect, interested by the disease, but, but the lymph nodes we have seen have disappeared on the PSMA pet. So this may also go in the direction you were commenting, that coline pet, as we know that PSMA is much more informative, the coline pet in this man was not informative enough. What would be your comment? Regarding this, a total waste of time and money. <laughs> That's a clear comment. <laughs> Very simple, a yeah, total waste yeah, of I everything. Agree. I agree, I agree, I agree. So you mean by that that this will not change anyhow your therapeutic attitude in such a manner? No, way. no way. Very good. So the man comes to see you for a second opinion, Nicola, and he tells you immediately, I'm not in favor of a radical prostatectomy, whatever you tell me, what would you suggest him? Well, he needs a local treatment and plus a systemic one. He doesn't want one of the two local treatment modalities, so the only one is the other one, which is painful to say, but it's radiotherapy. And on top of that, it must be a systemic treatment. Standard of care should be at least two years of AEDT. The question then should be, do we need to add on top of AEDT some form of chemo? We have two trials that are fully published. The GTUG, which doesn't show anything except progression-free survival benefit, but absolutely no difference in survival. And we also have a, a trial from the SWOG were suggested a survival benefit, but one-sided analyzed. If you analyze a two-sided, it's negative. It's not statistically significant. But the follow-up is shorter compared to the JTUG. So I'm not sure outside the trial I would go for docetaxel on top of ADT long-term plus radiotherapy to a prostate plus a whole pelvis. Steven, briefly. Well, I, I hear Nicolas say that he will need um, Systemic therapy anyway, I'm not so sure. He's got one high risk factor, only one. It's a clinical T3, 
but it's Gleason 7, 4 plus 3, PSA is below 20. If you look at those patients, there is still a reasonable rate of men who may be helped by surgery alone. But okay. he doesn't want to have surgery. I know, but I would anyway talk to him again and, talk, and say that if you go for radiation, you will need systemic treatment, that's for, that's for sure. Plus, there is this doubtful note, so what, what yeah. will you do? Will you, will you irradiate the pelvis? Or, well, well, so you have some problems there as well. That's an interesting comment. Let, let's see what I'm the sorry, men guys, say. We need to so, move on, to okay. keep the timeline. What happened? The, the men asked and was convinced, convincing the surgeons to have an extended lymphadenectomy. We have here in French the, 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 the result, but I can translate it for you. They really found two <laughs> positive lymph nodes out of the 23 that were mm -hmm. taken at the, uh, at the extended lymph node for these patients. So the question is now, the patient still doesn't want any form of treatment of his prostate, which is surgery, so he wants an external beam radiotherapy. We may optimize external beam radiotherapy with a brachytherapy boost, as you are well aware. You have now the PN plus disease. What would you do in terms of systemic treatment, Nicola? Three years of ADT, nothing more. Simple. Okay. So no indication never, for I would never based on done, PN+. Plus. I would never have done a, a, a staging nodal dissection. Unfortunately, this is what happened. So you ask me what are. I will do now? Yeah. ADT for three years, that's it. And radiotherapy, of course. Of course. Because it doesn't want anything else. The question else. is about systemic Even treatment. The same? We would go for two years of ADT and we would do pelvis as well, irradiating the yeah. pelvis, because, because you never remove all the nodes. For surgeons, yeah. we think we do, but we but don't. In fact, we don't. There may still be nodes in this field. May I have a final yeah. very yes or no question? Do you think this man would be a good candidate for a randomized trial? Yeah. And if you could, which one would you pick up for him? Well, probably the endless question is which treatment is, which, which local form of treatment is better, and I would clearly suggest to include this patient as PCG15. Yeah. Okay. I agree. You too? So it would uh, not that, be that, a question on the systemic therapy for those patients. It would much more on the local therapy for you. I think it's one of the major issues. Correct. My selection would be this one. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. For, for randomized control trials, SPCG15 would have been a fantastic trial for this guy because you compare surgical Correct. approach versus radiation. But we have a trial running, as you know, in, in Leuven. That's the PART trial, yeah. which is actually taking into account the high likelihood that there is more nodes yet. And so there, it's a toxicity, um, it's a feasibility and toxicity study, phase two, uh, Gerte Mirlis PI, and we irradiate the prostate, the pelvis, and also the periortic region yeah. in order to have maximize local regional control. But it, it's, it's a single-armed trial, but we would put them in there. Thank you for this uh, very interesting case and discussion.